So I want to talk about cores in this video. Um, and the first thing I want to say is that is what a cross origin request is. So you can actually look up the specifics, but basically, for our purposes, um, yeah, a.com is a is an origin, and b.com is a different origin. So if a.com is making a request to b.com, that's a cross origin request because it's one origin making a request to a different origin. And cross origin requests are actually made all all the time, like in an image tag. Um, if you're, you know, the source is has, has is to b.com, that's a cross origin request. Your browser has to send a request to b.com to get that image, and it's the same thing with style sheets like Bootstrap. Um, if you're using a CDN, you're linking to um, a different origin. And same with a script tag, like jQuery. So these are all cross-origin requests that you're already making. But you may be, be confused because you may have heard of this same origin policy that sort of says you can make cross-origin requests. You can only make requests to the same origin. And what that really means is actually that it, it only applies to XML HTTP requests which are the things that you use to make AJAX requests. So the same origin policy does not apply to these uh, these tags, but it does apply to, to AJAX requests. Um, and that isn't quite true. There's a couple other things it applies to, like I'll show you... Um, uh, I forget where it is here. It, it applies to these things. Um, I'll link to this in the description, but let's focus on the XML HTTP requests. Um, so why have this same origin policy? Well, if we didn't have a same origin policy, consider this situation. Let's say that you have two browser, browser windows open. Uh, one of them is bank.com and you're logged in. So when you log in, it puts a, a, a cookie, a, the session ID cookie, in your, the cookies associated with bank.com. So you've got this, this cookie set. And let's say you're also logged into attack.com. And attack.com has a script that makes a request to bank.com with an instruction to transfer, I don't know, a million dollars from the currently logged in account to, to my account. So if I'm the author of attacks.com, I might have wrote this script saying transfer money from my my account, transfer money from the currently logged in account to my account if I'm malicious. And what would happen here if browsers didn't have the same origin policy is the user would go to attacks.com, this script tag would execute, and it would send a request to bank.com this request, and the way things work with browsers is if a request is being sent to bank.com, it's going to look to get bank.com's cookies and send them along with the request. And this is dangerous because, you know, the user is logged in, so this cookie is going to be set and sent along, and bank.com is going to think that this is an authorized request being made because the person's logged in and genuinely wants to transfer this million dollar amount of money. So yeah, without the same origin policy, we have this problem where attacks.com can basically hijack the cookies of bank.com and we don't want this. So browsers implement this security policy that says XML HTTP requests cannot make cross-origin requests. They can only make requests to its own origin. So attack.com can only make requests to attack.com, and bank.com can only make requests to bank.com. So this is the same origin policy. But even though it's uh, good for security, it is a little bit restrictive because sometimes we want to make these cross-origin requests. So what they did is they use this mechanism called CORS, which stands for um, cross-origin resource sharing. And basically what's happening with CORS is, like, if 
they're basically saying, like, okay, bank.com, like, if you really want to let, I don't know, some some site that you trust make make a request to your server, um, we'll let you do that. But you just have to specify that that these safe websites are allowed to make requests to your your server. And so the way this works is let's say that a.com is trusted by b.com um, and a.com wants to make a get request for some stuff. What the b.com server would do is it would respond with this header, this access control allow origin header and it would basically put the things that are whitelisted that it trusts here. So it might trust a.com and c.com. Um, and what happens here is the client makes the request, the server responds, and because the client sees this header, it's going to say, okay, I'm, I'm part of this whitelist, I'm going to show the response. Whereas if we had a different situation where um, let's let's copy and paste this thing here. If we had it, ooh, sorry. One moment. Um. Anyway, all right. So if we had a different situation where this was d.com, and this request was made, um the response would be the same, but the way the browser would interpret the response would be different. Uh, the browser would get this response, and it would say, um, like, hmm, I don't see myself in this white list of access control allow origin. I'm not going to provide the response because that would be unsafe. So the browser is basically acting as the, I don't know, trusted party that knows whether or not to show the response based on whether the server wants, wants you to. And so this is how it works with um, simple quote-unquote requests. But other requests that are more dangerous have to be pre-flighted, which basically means that you need to be approved before you can even send the request. Like, yeah, because the request is dangerous. And the requests that this applies to are requests with a method other than get, head, or post. Requests that, let's do this one, requests that have a custom HTTP header, like you can set whatever HTTP header you want. So if you set a custom one like this, uh, it would need to be pre-flighted if it was sent to a different origin. Or if it is a post method with a content type of something other than these three things. And the reason for that is because, well, it's already the case that if you, you know, browsers have a form that make a post request, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna send, you know, the post request stuff with these, with this content type. So like, you can already do that. So there's no point in restricting XML HTTP requests further because that can already be done. So yeah, so requests that meet these, you know, that fall into one of these categories here, they need to be pre-flighted and I'll show you what that means. So if you have a request like this, if you have you know something like this in your code, uh, and the content type, let's say it's JSON, uh, that falls under the category of the second one, where it's a post request with a content type of other than one of these three things. So your browser is going to see this and say, okay, I see a request that I should pre-flight, and what it's going to do is it's going to send an options request to the server, with you know telling it this it's coming from this origin, and the access control request method is post. So this is basically asking like, hey, I'm doing something that might be dangerous, like are you sure I could send the request? And if b.com has a.com on its whitelist, 
uh, B.com is going to say, yeah, you could send the request. Uh, you're part of my whitelist, and this, this post method is also part of my whitelisted methods. And then the browser is going to say, okay, cool, I'll send you the request. And it sends it the request, and the server says, okay, things went well. Um, 201, I created the resource, and you are indeed allowed to do that. So, yeah, that's, that's cores. Um, to recap, browsers have a same origin policy as a security mechanism, but cores cross-origin resource sharing is a way to get around that.